So let's start with the basics. So what exactly does the FAFSA versus the CSS profile stand for? Well, for the FAFSA, it stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, whereas the CSS profile stands for College Scholarship Service Profile. In terms of where to apply, you would use this link for the CSS profile and this link for the FAFSA. Now let's talk about when exactly does the CSS or the FAFSA open up. So for the CSS profile, that opens up every year on October 1st. And typically for the FAFSA, it also opens up on October 1st of every year. However, there is an exception to it opening up in December of 2023 for the 2024-2025 FAFSA form. So for the CSS profile, deadlines vary by institution, but are often very aligned with admissions deadlines. And you might expect to see deadlines fall between January to March for regular decision students. However, for those wanting to apply to schools for early decision, the deadline might be around November. Now in terms of the deadline for the FAFSA, so there's actually several deadlines for the FAFSA which can vary by state, institution, and also by federal deadlines which are typically later than CSS profile deadlines. And to learn more about these specific deadlines such as the one specific to your state, you can use this link and of course if you're wanting to know a specific school's deadline, you would have to go to their website. <music> So in both cases, for the FAFSA and the CSS profile, you're typically expected to resubmit annually for each academic year since your economic status may change over time. So please do not think that this is a one-time application and that you don't have to continue putting in your application as a current college student. I have had so many students over the years think that and then wonder why they don't qualify for any more Pell Grants or other forms of aid. So for the CSS profile, it is used primarily for non-federal aid and institutional aid, which includes grants and scholarships from colleges and universities. Whereas for the FAFSA, the funding for the FAFSA is used for federal financial aid programs such as Pell Grants, federal work study, and federal student loans. <music> Now, in terms of eligibility, this varies a lot for the CSS profile versus the FAFSA. So for the FAFSA, you have to be a U.S. citizen and some eligible non-citizens are eligible as well. For instance, if you are a U.S. national, a U.S. permanent resident, Cuban Haitian entrant, asylum granted, refugees, and more can be seen here on their official website. As for the eligibility for the CSS profile, this is open to U.S. citizens and eligible non-U.S. citizens, including international students. And you can learn more via this website here. And also, if you are using the CSS profile as an international student specifically, then go to this website and filter with yes to see which schools require the CSS profile specifically for international students. And please note if a school you are interested in does not use CSS for international students, still check that school's website separately as they may have a different financial aid process or opportunities for international students. For instance, when I go to this university's website, bard.edu, they have a separate application process specifically for their international students. So that just gives you an idea of what this could potentially look like. <music> Now let's talk about schools. Which schools exactly accept the FAFSA and which schools accept the CSS profile? So for the CSS profile, typically it is accepted by U.S. private colleges, universities, and some scholarship programs. It is accepted by over 200 schools, and you can use this link again to find all of their participating institutions. Also keep in mind that not all of the schools on a list will require you to complete the CSS profile. Some may be where CSS is for international students, but not for domestic students, or for domestic students, but not so much for international students. And if you only want want to apply to schools that don't require the CSS profile, then filter by no for domestic or no for international student category. So for the FAFSA, this is accepted by accredited 
U.S. colleges, universities, or trades slash vocational schools, whether private or public, in order to receive federal aid and by some state aid programs. So if you attend or you are interested in attending a school that is not accredited, that is unaccredited, then you might not be able to get any federal aid and will instead pay out of pocket or take out private student loans. Now to find which schools are accredited, you can use this search engine here. Okay, so now on to what information is needed. So for the CSS profile, it collects very detailed financial information and it typically takes more time to fill out in comparison to the FAFSA. You will need various pieces of information and paperwork such as your federal tax returns, W-2 forms, other records of current year income, records of untaxed income, benefits, assets, bank statements, etc. So for the FAFSA, this requires considerably less information in comparison to the CSS profile, which makes it easier to fill out. It focuses primarily on income and family size with a simplified formula for need-based aid calculations. And just recently, the FAFSA made a lot of major changes to its application, such as how previously there was a little over 100 questions you had to answer, but now it's like three dozen, 36 questions. So it's a lot easier and faster to fill out even more. And if you're interested in learning other ways in which the FAFSA has recently changed, then make sure to refer to this video on my channel. Now let's talk about the cost. So how much exactly does it cost you to fill out the free application for federal student aid? Hmm, I wonder. Well, it's free. It's completely free. So if someone says that in order to fill out the FAFSA, you have to pay, they are wrong unless you want to hire a separate service like a FAFSA expert to help you with filling out the application properly, then feel free to do so. So for the CSS profile, it actually has a fee waiver that covers all application and reporting fees, thus making it free. Those who qualify are domestic undergraduate applicants, such as if your family makes up to $100,000 a year, you qualify for an SAT fee waiver, or if you are an orphan or ward of the court under the age of 24. However, there is an exception to this. So if you are a U.S. citizen and you're classified as a dependent student, well, your custodial parent must live in the U.S. or a U.S. territory to be eligible for the CSS profile fee waiver. Here's another exception. This time in terms of trying to qualify for the fee waiver. So let's say that your economic situation changes drastically, such as due to a natural disaster or other circumstances. Well, if you were previously not given the automatic fee waiver, then contact the customer service of CSS to see what can be done. Now, for those who don't qualify for the fee waiver under any of these circumstances, then the CSS profile has a fee for each college or program you send it to. As of 2023, it's $25 for the initial application to one institution and $16 for each additional institution. And finally, if you don't qualify for an automatic fee waiver and are still unable to pay the fee, please note that some institutions may have their own fee waiver program. So you as a student or as a parent should definitely research or contact an institution and inquire for more information about this. Now let's talk about the parents' involvement when filing the FAFSA and the parents' involvement when filing the CSS profile. So for the FAFSA, if your child is a dependent student, two unique FSA IDs are necessary to complete the FAFSA form online. So you'll need a parent's FSA ID as well as a student's FSA ID. Now, only one parent needs to sign the student's FAFSA form, so only one parent needs an FSA ID. However, if the parents live together, then both parents are required to report their income and asset information on the FAFSA. Now, if you instead have parents who are divorced, then make sure to refer to this link here as well as this link. Now, if you are instead an independent student, then the process for you is different. You will not have to account for your parents' income. So make sure to learn more about how to file the FAFSA properly as an independent student by going to this link here. Now let's say that you have unusual circumstances. Well, you can file for a FAFSA dependency override so that you can instead qualify as an independent student. So for instance, if you have an abusive family environment, were abandoned by parents, have parents who are incarcerated or institutionalized, 
Uh, your parents lack the physical or mental capacity to raise you. If you have parents whose whereabouts are unknown or cannot be located. If your parents are hospitalized for an extended period of time. If you live within an unsuitable household, such as a child being removed from the house and placed into foster care. Or if you're legally married, but your spouse dies or you ended up getting a divorce. So for the CSS profile, there are situations in which a parents will need to create their own account. For instance, some schools require the CSS profile for non-custodial parents. And here's a bonus tip for you guys. So when you filter by no for the non-custodial parent category, doing so can potentially maximize the amount of aid a student could qualify for from certain schools since they are not required to also report their non-custodial parent's income. Now let's say that you as a primary parent do not want to share your financial information on your student's account. Well, you also have the opportunity to create a separate account via College Board to input your information. Now, if you are applying to a school that requires for a non-custodial parent to also submit information, this can potentially be waived. So the types of waiver requests that may be considered include if you have no contact or support ever received from your non-custodial parents, if there are legal orders that limit the non-custodial parent's contact with you, or if there's abusive situations involving you and the non-custodial parent. So if any of this sounds like your situation, then what you would need to do is to fill out this form and submit a waiver to each school that can accept it. Also keep in mind for this waiver, some schools might require additional information such as third party documentation, like from a counselor, social worker, teacher, and so forth to verify what is being said. So make sure to keep that in mind.